science, technology and innovation are increasingly important as the world moves into an era of what's been called the knowledge economy. You have to have effective policies at the level of government and effective management and strategy at the level of companies. And one of my messages is we've got to do more uh, to encourage this, to make this possible than we have been doing in the past. We're sometimes in danger of not keeping up with the rapidly changing world. Well now we're moving into a different era where manufacturing is a relatively small part of economic activity, in the UK it's only 15%, and services are much more important. So we've got to be looking at innovative activities that relate to services. But another big change is we've got to be looking at a world in which sustainability, maintaining the uh, climate, stopping climate change, uh, things to do with, with those sorts of issues of sustainability are much more important than they were 20 or 30 years ago. Government policy makers want things they can measure, so they immediately turn to things like how much do we spend on R&D, how many patents do we produce, how many R&D researchers have we got. Well these are important aspects of innovation, but they are not the only things that feed into innovation. There are lots of other activities going on which at present are not caught with metrics, and you have, have to be aware of the danger that your policies don't focus too much on the things that are measurable versus the things which are important but harder or if not impossible to measure. Hong Kong, uh, like the UK now, uh, has a declining share of GDP in the form of manufacturing. For the UK, manufacturing is now only about 15% of gross domestic product. So there's a lot of other economic activities going on that are not manufacturing. But in most of these, there are innovations taking place in the form of new services, new processes and so on. And we have to have policies that encourage all of that if we are, if you're in Hong Kong, are to remain successful uh, economically and socially over coming decades. Hong Kong, like everywhere, has to innovate more, otherwise you are in danger of falling backwards uh, relative to other countries. Many of these companies pioneering disruptive technology also seem to be very adept at disrupting tax systems and avoiding paying any taxes. And I feel that that is, that is a problem that has to be solved probably at a international or global level because what happens at present is that these companies do deals with small companies with lax tax regimes, whether it's Luxembourg or Ireland or Liechtenstein or whatever, so they end up paying minuscule amounts of tax and therefore are not contributing to the economy uh, and to the public sector in the way that other companies and also individuals are, are contributing through the taxes which the rest of us pay. So there's an issue there to do with fair taxation which has to be resolved with many of these new companies with their disruptive technologies. And therefore you need policies that keep up with this rapidly changing world uh, populated by companies like Uber and Google and Amazon and so on who at present are running rings around the tax authorities as well as some of the other regulatory authorities and making lots of money out of it but uh, perhaps not contributing back to society in the way that all companies have a, res a social responsibility to do. Mm -hmm.